So, like, does it drive you nuts when the patient says prostrate? Like, puts an <laughs> uh, extra R in the word prostate? Yeah, that's that's entertaining every, yeah. time. every time. I find I find it very frustrating. <laughs> Hey, welcome to another episode of Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And I'm Dr. Peter Ince. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Ince. Dr. Ince is a urologist, and because it's Movember, it's Movember. we're talking about men's health, we're wearing these silly mustaches. Okay, yeah. so what are we going to talk about today? Dr. Ince, a urologist who's taken the time out to talk to us today, thank you so much. My pleasure. We're going to talk about what is the PSA test, and should I, should I get one? All so, right. let's break it down. What, what, does it, what does it mean? So PSA is a naturally occurring substance that the prostate produces. And natural cells produce it in the prostate, but when you get prostate cancer, there's an excess of that production. So if you measure that level in the blood, it could be an indication if that level is going up that you could have prostate cancer. Okay. Prostate. What is the prostate gland? The prostate gland is one of those things that is only used 2% or, well, maybe half a percent of the time okay. because it only is needed to produce fluids that mix with the sperm and give nourishment so they can swim and do all those things to create a pregnancy. Okay, so that's the prostate gland, part of the hormone system. Uh, and then the prostate specific antigen is a measure of what's going on with the prostate. Yeah, just a naturally occurring substance which goes up when you could have cancer. Now okay. the important thing is the PSA or that, that substance also goes up for other reasons. Okay. The number one reason is probably the prostate is normally about the size of a walnut. Okay. Now as you get older the Which is one of the healthiest nuts, just FYI. Thanks. Yeah. Didn't know that. There you go, it is. I personally like almonds. Okay. But um, what happens as men get older, the prostate will enlarge, and that's totally benign. It's not a sign of cancer. Okay. And as the prostate gets larger, it's going to produce normally a little bit more of that PSA. So that's one of the big problems is people think my PSA is high automatically means I have prostate cancer. Right. So it can be a very individual thing, that measurement. Um, some people have really small glands and a normal PSA and they could still have prostate cancer. Okay. So the size of the prostate will change the PSA level. And unfortunately, there's lots of other things that change the PSA. Anything that causes inflammation, such as infection, and it can be even a generalized body flu, COVID. Okay. A lot of things can make the entire body get inflamed and the prostate will release more PSA. So unfortunately, PSA isn't the best test in the world because a lot of things will give you false positives. But regardless of that, I personally feel and, and most urologists feel is a very useful tool to detect prostate cancer if used correctly. Okay, so it brings up a couple of great points. So our views are really smart. We teach them a lot about medical terminology and yeah. testing. So we would say that the PSA test is very uh, specific, very sensitive, sorry, that would everybody with prostate cancer have an elevated PSA? Not necessarily. If you have a small prostate, you can have a normal well, that's PSA. Well, he was listening. Yes, but would you, would you, net, you still could be totally normal or just not as high? You could be totally, totally normal, normal and still have prostate cancer. Right. So it's not an absolute test. So it's okay. not perfectly sensitive and it's not perfectly specific. So a bunch of exactly. things. Exactly. So it doesn't make it a super duper screening test in that if, you, if it comes back positive, it doesn't really mean 100% anything. But you're suggesting with those flaws in the test, it's still a very useful test to as do. As long as those parameters are understood. Okay. All right, so what do you do then with the, with the value? You get a value back that's elevated. What do you do knowing that it could be just a normal process that it's elevated or knowing that it might represent cancer? Well, that's, that's where we have to use our expertise. So uh, usually combined uh, with a PSA test uh, is a rectal exam, and that's just feeling the surface of the prostate to feel for any lumps or bumps. And obviously, if the prostate is round, you can see you're only feeling one side of it. It just so happens that prostate cancer happens to grow on the outside of the prostate. So okay. feeling the outside can be helpful. Okay. Well, thank you, prostate, for that. 
So viewers who are worried about getting a rectal exam, or I'm sure there's a lot of people nervous and going, I don't want to go get a rectal exam. If your urologist or your doctor is recommending it, it's for good reason, and we just want to normalize it. You know. Yes, and you can have a normal PSA, yeah. and the rectal exam will detect a nodule okay. before the PSA test will detect okay. it. So you, get, you have an elevated PSA, uh, then you get a, a rectal exam to try and detect uh, the cancer. Hopefully, luckily, the, the prostate is normal. Then, do you repeat the PSA in a year, six months, eight question. months? So, the important thing is to look at the overall picture. Okay. So, obviously, you do the whole physical, or you do the whole uh, history. And the important thing, probably the most important factor, is family history and race. Okay. So, if you have a family history where, you know, you've got three brothers and they've all had prostate cancer by 50, you end the appointment right there and you go to the biopsy suite. Okay. That's just a no-brainer. So family history, so that means uh, brothers, fathers, uh, uncles, um, anybody uh, that's a first degree relative, okay. uh, that's important. Now overall, if there's a high rate of cancer in general, that also would be an under, another indication. If the PSA is elevated, you'd be a little bit more suspicious. So family history is probably the most important reason to, do a, to pursue that elevated PSA more aggressively. Okay. The second reason, uh, the second indication would be race. So uh, unfortunately, black people do have a much higher uh, incidence of prostate cancer. We're not sure why, mm -hmm. but um, that would be another uh, indication to be a little bit more aggressive in getting a follow-up on the PSA. Okay. Now, the other important thing is prior PSA levels are important. Okay. So if this patient had years and years and the PSA was like 1, 1.5, 1.3, the cutoff here in Canada, we say 4 or less is normal. Okay. Now, if you were a 1 and all of a sudden you jump to a 3, your doc says, well, it, it's still under four, it's normal. That's mm -hmm. not the case. We're looking at the rate of change. Uh -huh. Whereas someone else who's been like four, 4.2, 4.3, and they're nice and stable and gradually going up, they would be less of a concern, especially if you do that rectal or an ultrasound and find that their prostate is also larger than normal. Makes so it sense. fits in. Their prostate's a little bit bigger, mm -hmm. their PSA is a little bit higher. Okay. So the relative rate of change is also very important. Okay, okay. almost more important than the actual level. Yes, the rate, how yeah. fast so that's changing. why we usually see patients who've had normal PSAs and all of a sudden there's a spike. Okay. So that's why all the previous PSAs are very important. Right, and so what age would you start getting a PSA with no family history, just a screening? Well, that's controversial because okay. it is uh, no longer a standard practice to do screening for prostate cancer. Now, they, that may have changed. Um, I have to ask a family doc for sure, but um, usually it's 50. Okay. Now, if you have that family history or you are black, then start earlier. Earlier. Okay. Okay, so prostate, we talked about as a gland, we talked about its function. PSA is a naturally occurring substance, the prostate specific antigen, and we're interested in the levels of it. Keeping in mind that a high level might be normal, a low level might be abnormal, but generally we go by four or over. If you have an elevated PSA and a family history, uh, or you're of one of the races that is at risk, that gets you further investigation, uh, such as a biopsy. Right, and now the, the, the most recent change uh, is that we often will now elect, instead of going straight to a biopsy, we now are doing MRI prostate imaging. Okay. So that helps us to avoid doing unnecessary biopsies. Right. Uh, it's, it's added an extra cost, uh, but the benefit is obviously you don't need the biopsy. So the MRI is often considered the next step. Now, if, if we're very suspicious, if there's a big jump in the PSA with no explanation for it um, and a nodule on rectal exam, we might say, you know what, let's just go straight to the biopsy. Okay. And okay. big jump is what, 20% in a year, is it? Everything is relative to what those numbers were before. Okay. But um, 
Certainly if you have a 20-30% rise, it, uh, it does add a, a level of suspicion. All right. That's a great summary wow. of the PSA test. It's complicated. It right? is. The PSA yeah, test. It's, it's, uh, there's, unfortunately, it, it isn't an exact test because mm -hmm. there's so many variables. And that's why a urologist does come in handy to figure all that out. Okay. So if you were confused about the PSA test, you're not alone. It's a complicated thing. We I'm rely sorry. on our experts. I'm sorry I added to the confusion. <laughs> no, thank you. We rely on our experts, our urologists, to sift through what it means. So please don't hesitate. Get your PSA checked if your primary care physician has told you to. Yep. If you've been instructed to get a rectal exam, get the rectal exam. Yep. And uh, hopefully we can, if there is a cancer or something, it can be detected early using these sort of tests and tools. Exactly. Awesome. And remember, if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, and go to the November page and support Talking With Docs for our fundraising this month. Oh, is that what we're doing? We are. Okay. <laughs> and Dr. Ritz, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Expertise. My pleasure. Uh, and remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.